Hey everybody, welcome to part two of The Remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Pantelaresco, and you're listening to us live in the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. You can access the show by typing in www.themicroeffect.com and click on the appropriate links, the chat room links, come on in, make friends, get acquainted, cooperate, solve some issues, exchange ideas. We also publish information at www.health-access.com as well as we're being published at byebyebluskies.com with articles on health, remedies, and general information going on worldwide and right here at home. This program is designed to help you keep your health and to show viable and inexpensive alternatives that can keep you and your family healthy and to remove, alleviate or remove unwanted illnesses that may occur in our lives from time to time making you aware that not all that's supposed to be safe is, and in some cases to allow, allowing you to understand the hidden dangers and possible solutions for prevention or protection of your health. I've been in the health food industry as well as a personal consultant and bodybuilder trainer, assisting people in finding health solutions and have utilized different healing modalities from different cultural themes as well as in herbs, supplements, vitamins, essential oils, and foods. You can access me by going to my website at augmentinforce.com. A-U-G-M-E-N-T-I-N-F-O-R-C-E dot com. I do personal consultations as well, whether it's through the internet, through the IMs, phones, personal visits, as well as, as, well as in-house workshops for families, individuals, or groups. On my website, I have a catalog link, and on that catalog link, we have um, a flash drive. We have the bucket of t-shirts, uh, herbal remedies, and tinctures. Um, Flash drives a 32 gig flash with books, databases, videos, or radio shows and interviews all in one. I also do consultations as well. And, and here we have in the shop here, we have a shop here in Windsor where we have all kinds of health remedies as well to help you. For more information, you can reach me at um, independs at yahoo.com, I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-Z at yahoo.com. Or contact me here at 519-977-5351. If you have any questions or comments pertaining to the show, <coughs> feel free to call in. <coughs> excuse me. Feel free to call in at 208-935-0094. And today is December 31st, 2017. This is the last show this year. <laughs> Play on words. The last show this year. Okay, the first half talked about going down memory lane and seeing what's been going on. Seeing how we have been hijacked, how we have been, uh, how things were introduced to us in regard to our health. Um, how we need, how we became corrupted, compromised, uh, deceived, misdirected, and all these wonderful things that have come about to create the conundrum we're in today. Buying into the health food industry that has been perpetrating so-called health products that aren't really healthy. Basically, a majority of the products that they're promoting today basically will compromise you further because of the compromised methods of, of uh, manufacturing. That GMP was the, the end of the health food industry's quality. And when you see a GMP label on it, hang on your wallet and read the labels. Now, being that some of us, like myself, are ancient history, and we've been around to see this quagmire of insanity occur that has occurred in what's been called health. What do we do? Okay, if you're a 50s baby like myself, then, and if you're even up until the year 2000, and you've got children, the number one thing you're going to have to do today more than anything else is protect your genetic code, your DNA, your chromosome, your endocrine system, your mitochondria, 
because the technology that you're exposed to today is designed to take tap into your genetic code and your DNA and to violate you through that pathway in your body. When you're looking at the ground wave emissions network and the Gwen Towers, okay, and I got that wrong. I, I know one of the um, one of the things I'm saying is not accurate there. Um, when we're looking at um, when we're looking at some of the things that we're being exposed to, like our ELFs, EMFs, ground wave emissions, you know, ground uh, Gwen Towers. Uh, when we're looking at AM and FM, we're looking at different frequencies. We're looking at things that break down the DNA, the genetic code, the myelin sheet of the cells, and the nanoparticles that are in the food supply, and the omega-3s that they perpetrate to be a good and healthy thing. The dirty sugar they call molasses that they've sold, sold you as a, oh, this has got good stuff in it, it's got garbage in it. These things have been put inside of you to break you down. The glyphosates in the food supply, the genetics in the food supply that strip the body of nutrients and minerals that are required for a healthy, uh, proper immune function, for proper brain function, proper organ function, enzyme producing minerals that the body requires to activate chemistry has been again stripped out, compromised, or neutralized. So what do you do? All right, number one, both men and women need selenium. Whether it's sodium selenite, selenium citrate, or selenium methionine, selenium methionine, these are some things you may want to consider adding to your repertoire. Because selenium protects the genetic code and the DNA. And if you've been eating fish oils, this, the, DNA, the selenium would have been popped out of your body. If you're looking at, uh, if you're actively sexually active at this point in time, if you're a male, the selenium levels in your, in your testicles would be depleted every time you have a moment with your partner. Okay, so you need to maintain high levels of selenium. For you men, you also need zinc. The zinc to protect, again, your, your capacity to produce testosterone for your brain. Your brain is tied to selenium. Women need the selenium as well, but not to the same extent that the men do. Uh, sorry, the zinc. I, I, I shouldn't, let me rephrase it. The zinc. The zinc is required by the men, but the women need it as well, but not the same as the men do. They both need, both of you need the selenium. Both need selenium to regulate the iodine and the thyroid. Both of you need selenium to regulate the heart rate. For those of you who have palpitating hearts all the time, Selenium might be a deficiency you have as a result of the cadmium pushing it out of your body. Women need twice the iodine that men do, and this is also another thing that protects the genetic code, the DNA, the chromosomes, the endocrine system, the cells. One mineral that does so many different things. And again, what have they done? They've turned around and sold you this crap, this kelp seaweed products. They don't have enough uh, iodine in them to do anything. Majority of those products that they're selling, these seaweed kelp products, one whole bottle would be equivalent to one drop of Lugo's iodine. Go figure. So when you're looking at some of the things that you are being, again, misled on, these are key factors that you want to consider. So, so far we're talking selenium, we're talking zinc, we're talking iodine. Let's get right down to boron. Boron also protects the skeletal structure. It also protects you against uh, fluoride poisoning. It can help decalcify the pineal gland. It regulates the endocrine system. Ooh. Okay, it can fortify the body. It's a key mineral. Let's look at copper. You've been all told, oh, copper poisoning, oh, you're going to die of copper, blah, blah, blah. Copper is required for brain functionality. Without copper, you cannot even grow br brand new uh, connections to the brain. It's required in the muscle, skeletal muscle tissue. It's also required by the immune system. Some of you have mold issues going on inside your body. That's because the glyphosates that they fed you and the genetics they gave you took out the copper 
and now you are wide open for these types of issues. So when you're looking at these key minerals right here, they also have any oxygen properties. Zinc, copper, iodine, they all have free radical, free scavenging materials that can remove some of the harmful metals out of the body. Zinc, taken in adequate doses, will remove cadmium out of the body. You know, so when we're looking at iodine, how it can remove mercury out of the body. How it can move chloride and bromine out of the body. Provided it is a predominant mineral or nutrient. Okay, Tony, can the selenium and zinc be ordered in powdered form? Yes, you can get zinc oxide and you can get um, sodium selenite and you can get selenomethionine and you can get straight selenite if you want. I got, I've ordered some selenomethionine and some selenite and I can, what I'm going to do with the selenite is I'll erase it off and I'll mix it with garlic powder and maybe citric acid. Um, the, or you can get, you can buy straight uh, selenomethionine, no problem. Uh, zinc oxide you can get. You may be able to find zinc citrate, but zinc oxide you can get. And to convert zinc oxide into a zinc citrate, you would need 80 grams, 70 grams of uh, citric acid, 70 to 80 grams of citric acid, 20 to 30 grams of uh, zinc oxide. Blend them together, you just made zinc citrate. If you put them in a solution, you have a liquid solution. We did a video on that that will be coming out. Um, what's your take on gold, liquid gold nitrate? Um, I'm not sure. Gold is a funny funny one to fool with um, it can screw up your kidneys so we, we also showed you how to make your own uh, colloidal gold in the video when it does finally come out Dave we did film that so we showed you how to, what they call a machine maceration point um, I would have to ask you what you're using the gold nitrate for uh, that would probably be the better question um, and you know if persimmons are safe as far as GMOs and nano pesticides look Everything today is going to be sprayed with nano pesticides. Give your head a shake if you think that it's not being done. And because it's coming from another country doesn't mean they're not doing it there either. I talk to people from all over the planet, from Nigeria, Yugoslavia, France, England, Germany, Italy, um, Iceland, all over the place, I, uh, uh, Thailand. The Middle East, um, Australia, New Zealand, across Canada, across the U.S., the Caribbean. I get people calling me from all over. It's the same song and dance that's going on in North America, is going on in those respective countries. And it's worse in countries where technology is behind. So do not assume for one minute that your stuff coming from somewhere else uh, is going to be any safer that would be a luxury so when we're talking today's food supply on the, it's a planetary issue okay the countermeasure to what we're having to deal with this year would be my my strongest encouragement would be to develop your own either aquaponic hydroponic um, vertical garden or box gardens that you can grow indoors you may not initially be able to grow everything but through time and and uh, patience you may discover ways to grow everything inside that's where we're at today okay i have looked at insects under a scope and they're loaded with nanoparticles okay i have i have basically unraveled some of these animals and they're completely loaded so if the insects are being compromised and they too have the nanoparticles in them, any, any pollination from some of these animals will spread that as well. The, the reason why the kiwi and the pineapple are safe is because the kiwi has a, uh, has a hard core. You still have to peel off a, good, uh, a, a layer off, about an eighth of an inch, and pineapple also has a very tough, tough core. 
Uh, again, you're, you're, when you're coring the pineapple, I'm not talking about canned crap that you're buying. I'm talking about real pineapple. You're taking off a good half inch off the uh, top and you're cutting into part of the fruit too. So you will remove a great deal of the nano. There's a big, dif big, big difference. I mean, the question you asked was, you know, uh, are, are they safe as far as GMOs and nano pesticides? Everything is being sprayed. I mean, Seriously, to assume that it's not is, again, a, a presumption at best, you know. And if it's coming into the United States, the other big thing you've got to be concerned about is the irradiation. If it's coming from outside the borders of America, it's going to be irradiated. So it's not just Monsanto. Okay, you got to start looking at Syngesta, Symbus. Uh, Cargill, ADM, BASF, Dow, DuPont. You know, these are other Nestle's. Nestle's is, is all over the planet. And, I mean, they're stealing the water out of the Great Lakes. And they're also selling genetics through the world. So, Monsanto happened to be the fo main focus. <laughs> they're not the only game in town. And you got to remember... They were bought out by Bayer. So that's another thing you're probably going to see. You're probably going to see transitional companies this year being absorbed by other companies to, again, um, separate the name of companies from what they were doing before. People have short memories. They can't stay focused and they can't... Um, um, they can't retain a memory for a long enough period. Keep your focus. Keep keep vigilant. Okay. When we're talking, some of the stuff that has gone on, again, supplements that you might want to consider as well, are sulfur. Some kind of sulfur, whether it's garlic powder, onion powder, MSM, alpha lipoic acid, taurine, you know, uh, cysteine, uh, acetylcysteine. You know, these are things you want to be able to have on hand. Okay, we talked earlier, excuse me, first half of the show, where you may get some snow, and all of a sudden you get a rain that washes the snow, which will evaporate whatever's in the snow. It's breaking down that biofilm or that uh, hydrogel con contaminant or liposome, and so when it breaks it down, the stuff now is being released into the air. You're breathing it. You're getting hit with something. Okay, so the sulfur is one of the things you can use to help protect the respiratory system and to make to fortify your glutathione levels. So again, garlic soup, garlic tea, onion tea, onion soup, onion sauce, garlic sauce, uh, garlic and oil, onion and oil, onion and applesauce. Make these things, keep them on hand. You get hit with something, immediately start using these things. Key thing I'm going to remind you, anytime you get hit with something, you're doing something to fight off whatever you're doing every three hours. High doses of vitamin C, three grams every three hours. Same with the sulfur, three grams every three hours. You know, iodine, three or four drops in water every three hours. You know, um... You may want to use copper, the same thing. So again, you know, a teaspoon every couple hours. These are things, you might want to combine it with the sulfur. So you're making a garlic tea, a garlic soup, add some copper to it. So when we're looking at some of the things that we're dealing with today, okay, you've got to be able to figure out right off the bat if it's respiratory, Let's go with C, let's go with copper, let's go with zinc, you know, right off the bat. Let's go with some kind of phosphorus and combine that phosphorus with things that are going to protect the respiratory, like, like thyme, like savory, like oregano. Make a liposome with these things, add some vitamin C to it. Consume that every couple hours. 
Okay, these are some of the things we can do. Let's say you got kids who are having problems breathing because the snow got evaporated and they got something released in the air. Go get some onion and apple and make like a little sauce. Combine the apple with the onion. Have them consume it every couple hours, two or three ounces at a time. Get some cinnamon and clove. Make tea with this. Have your kids drink it. Add a little syrup of some kind, like maple syrup or birch tree syrup. Sweeten it up just a, a tad so they don't find it overwhelming. Have them drink it every three or four hours. Thyme and fenugreek is another thing you can use. Fenugreek produces a mucilage in the, in the respiratory tract so it can collect whatever's there. And thyme also is an antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral. And the thyme balances the fenugreek, so it's, they work in synergy. So when we're looking at what we can do, this is how you have to start to think. If you can buy some grapefruit seed extract, keep it around. Same thing, you start getting hit with stuff, start putting a couple drops in your water. Drink it every couple hours. Okay, this is the big key. Remember, if you get hit with something, it has to be constantly loaded into the body. It has to be constantly put in so that the body always has something that it can fight with. If you take it once a day... In five hours, whatever you've taken will be down to zero level. Keep that in mind. You'll be persistent by keeping it going and going. Okay, you're looking at some of the issues with skin. Skin is being hit with stuff from chemtrails. A lot of nano is falling on the skin, causing skin irritations. Okay, one of the things you're going to use to wash that off with is borax. 20 mule team borax. Wet a brush, put some on, and scrub it into the skin. You'll be surprised at what may come out. You can use a betadine iodine solution. That's like a soap. It's also a cleansing soap or cleansing an antiseptic. You can mix that together. Uh, you can buy that miracle soap that they've got. It looks, looks like some blue stuff. You could add the borax and the iodine to that miracle soap. It's a magnesium oil is what it basically is. And you can use that to wash the face. You know, a simple salt and a hot salt pack can help with that as well. Heat up some salt in a pot. Once it crackles, shut off the stove, put the salt in a double double washcloth, fold it over, add either an essential oil, vinegar, or turpentine on there, and pad the hand to make sure it's not too hot. Apply it on the face to be able to pull out, draw out, or to act as a cleanser on the skin because the salt in and of itself has properties to heal. Okay, another simple, easy method to keep things going. If you've got the nano poisoning, which they're calling more gallons. Okay, you may want to start doing the baths that we suggest. Go on the site, augmentinforce.com. Click on the YouTube recipe link. It's on the left side. Click on it, open it up. You'll see the nano bucket. Click on it and see the nano solutions. Click on them, download them, use these things. They will make a big difference if you've got this condition going on. If you're looking at um, digestive disorders or detoxing methods and you've been having problems with detoxing, okay, let's say you've got a weak system, use Epsom salt. Use a teaspoon of Epsom salt, put it in about a, a 16 ounces of water, uh, dissolve it, and you might want to add a little borax to it and then drink that throughout the day. The borax will increase the magnesium uptake which can flush out aluminum in the body. The sulfur and the Epsom salt will also collect the aluminum and pull it out of the body and protect the liver. Simple, inexpensive cleanse. So when we're looking at um, 
and we're looking at what we can do to detox that's one of the simplest detoxes you can buy you can use trisodium phosphate and you may want to add some stuff with it like minerals copper zinc um, iodine boron selenium so that these things can be taken into the cells to fortify the cellular matrix and phosphorus is a very key player in the genetic system add a little ribose to it and you start forming RNA and DNA if you combine it with something like creatine it allows for better uptake of these amino acids to be utilized by the body more readily if you combine IP6 or if you make your own IP6 which is anosto and trisodium phosphate and you put them together again you can repair the strands that are broken in the double helix your genetic code it can actually regrow new uh, new strands that have been completely removed you have a double binary system in your in your helix which means that you've got two strands that look exactly alike and if one breaks then the other one is there as a template if they both break you can repair them you can do things like HBK which is basically a histidine a glycine and a copper there's, uh, there's another amino there and lysine so the cheapest way of doing that is using gelatin lysine and copper put them together consume them drink them this repairs over three to four thousand genes in the body if you're looking for that information go on my site augmentinforce.com click on the August 2016 to the current site it's in one of those shows feel free to download access become whole again when we're looking at some of the things that we I'm talking about in regard to our genetic code saturated fat is a key player as well to maintain cellular integrity to repair the damaged cells that were done by these omega-3s and the saturated fat protects the body against viruses against infection it's a brain nutrient very important to maintain and sustain the saturated fat content in the body eliminate all bread all grains all pasta all rice all corn all soy no exceptions reduce uh, eliminate all the pseudo grains that they've told you the millet the the uh, quinoa the buckwheat eliminate them they've all been hijacked with the nano so when we're looking at what to do these are some of the things that we have to start thinking because the reason why I'm telling you leave those foods alone is because those are the very foods that they've loaded nanoparticles into some of you say well, what am I what are we gonna eat what are we gonna eat I don't see it all that what are we gonna eat <laughs> Bread isn't one of the things you should be eating anyway. <laughs> Keep that in mind. None of the grains. They've been compromised. If they don't have some form of mycotoxicity, they have nano nano uh, integration into their into their field. You have to remember your genetically modified wheat and grains and other things have had the genetics changed on these things. Your rice is another thing to avoid. Beer. These are all grain foods. Well, come on back. We're going to get more into some countermeasures to keep you going and flowing in the year 2017 when it gets here. See you in a bit. Hey, we are back. We are back on the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network, and this is The Remedy. Hi, I'm your host, Tony Pantelorusco, and you're listening to us live. We are a live show <laughs> in living color today. All right, we're talking about measures and countermeasures. During the break, I put in the chat room three links to three different videos, I think. When you see these things and you begin to realize that science fiction isn't fiction anymore. And what we're seeing is a reality. And <clears throat> I think the reality is the more of us that um, become aware... 
And the more of us that brainstorm, the better solutions we're going to come up with. The one show I liked was The Surrogate. And in that show, it had a toy in it. <clears throat> uh, I really liked this toy. Basically disarmed any tech. <laughs> I really, really, I, for some reason, I know I got this Mediterranean sadistic element to my thinking. But I really enjoyed this toy. <laughs> so go watch it. It's on the YouTube. Uh, just type in surrogate. If you're in the chat room, there's links are there. Just click on any of the links. And <clears throat> um, the um, you may find these things may be of science fiction entertainment format I always tell people when you watch a movie watch it three times the third time you will become desensitized to the dramatic aspect of it that's the that's the um, the uh, misdirect you know the deception part of it it's all drama and you get into that drama theme and then you're not thinking because you're in your entertainment mode but when you get into the analytical mode that you should be in and watching these things you can then pick up things they're showing you how these things are are, are basically can be taken apart if you pay attention you can see things but they're also showing you in their in their dramatizations what is going on has been going on for quite some time. I'm not sure if any of you have seen the movie Ex Machina. If you haven't seen the movie, get it some way, somehow. I'll leave that to your discretion, how you come about getting the, the, uh, the movie. But in there, it talks about the development of artificial intelligence and whether or not artificial intelligence has consciousness. Because at this point in the game now, machines are going to be developing a sort of consciousness aspect to their programming, to their, their algorithms. And when they first initiated this, this was done on Star Trek The Next Generation when you had a synthetic life form. We went all of a sudden from a Vulcan in the first Star Trek, which was supposedly a super smart alien that had a robotic mindset, all logical, and he ran on logic and, and permutations on logic, to the next, uh, next series where now we have to replace this alien super intellect, we now have a construct that's a super intellect and that is an artificial life. They slipped us in because everybody wanted to go where no man has gone before. <laughs> and so as a result, you know, they, they slipped in these, these uh, very subtle hints of what was happening. Yep. In the end of Ex Machina, they, they did what they call a turf test. And a turf test basically is you have a machine sitting behind a... a uh, a hidden stream can't see the machine the machine can't see you you ask questions and the, based on the questions you ask and how the machine responds you can determine whether or not <clears throat> the artificial intelligence has a consciousness in Ex Machina what they did is they basically interfaced the human being directly with the artificial intelligence and in there you see through the dramatic uh, through the dramatization of this this uh, display of technology how uh, initially the interaction began with the human asking the machine questions but then the machine turned it around and started asking questions of the human and learning and assimilating and integrating the interactions between the human because it starts off showing where the how the AI be, uh, got its information how it was using basically the emotions of humans that were basically gathered and, and collected by the internet, which was downloaded into the subroutines of the program. So this had all the emotions of a human being. It had all the responses of a human being, everything. So in this dialogue, she maneuvered the human to make the human think that this was really, this was another, almost a semi-human life form. And he asked a question of this. He says, if you could go anywhere, where would you go? 
And the artificial life responded to an intersection, a main intersection. He said, why would you go that? There, he said, because all the activity of humanity, it, you'll see it right at an intersection. I'm going to spoil it at the end just to give you an idea what happens. She gets out of the, basically she's confined into a lab. But at the end she gets out and people couldn't figure out what, what that meant. She got out, went to a city at an intersection. And what that was implying very strongly was that the artificial intelligence, the constraints of the AI is now outside the, its constraints and now it has access to all of humanity. This is the reality of today. This is what they entertained us with. This is what they have uh, again shown us. And now as a result, artificial intelligence runs free on the planet. And this is something you need to be aware of as well because this is going to have huge implications on every aspect of your life. Whether it's your belief systems, whether it's your health, whether it's your, your way of life and how you're living, your freedoms, your choices, everything is going to be impacted by this system. Let's see, I got a question. Tony, what's your take on B propolis extract as an antiviral, antimicrobial, fungal, uh, and Himalayan salt lamps for positive energy and frequencies? The salt lamps will work not because they're going to affect frequencies, but they're going to work because they're salt. And once you release salt in the air and you breathe salt, it has a, a detoxifying effect on the body. And if there's any chloride in the salt that you're breathing, it's going to kill uh, biological pathogens. So they, have a, they can have an effect. The simpler way and the cheaper way is to run a cool mist humidifier, add your iodine to it or some other tissue or some other salts you want to put into it like borax. And let it run in the air and breathe it. It'll have the same effect and a lot cheaper. <laughs> um, as far as the propolis goes, I would have used propolis maybe 20 years ago. And I was a big fan of it up until about 10 years ago. Because you have to understand, I am dealing with nanotechnology research. And so the nanotechnology will be in the flowers and and in the pollen and so a lot of these pollen products I'm not quite sure on anymore if the propolis can be distilled and the bulk of the nanotechnology removed then it may have some benefit but if it cannot be distilled then I would say leave it alone you know leave it alone um, it's not you got to remember and I was talking to somebody about this about a week ago. In today's time, you cannot think in terms of 1970 anymore. The biologicals that were bothering us in the 70s, you could treat with certain alternatives and treat very successfully. Today, today's infections are not just biologicals or pathologies. They are today an integration of nanobio mixtures or synthetic life created out of a lab. Joy, these nano silvers that they're selling are all again, uh, or colloidal silvers are all nano. Okay? And in order for you to be able to deal with some of these biologics that are coming out of a lab, these synthetics, you're going to need at least 100 parts per million of a colloidal silver. The nano silver will do nothing but be utilized by this technology to further spread its network in your body. So when I look at things today, there are some things I cannot get around. So I have to I have to negate those things just like anybody else. But some things I won't go near anymore. You know, unless again I I. Um, through some kind of separation of the nano or through some kind of distillation. I haven't, I'm, I'm still thinking about experimenting with a, um, an ice filtering. Not sure if it will work or not, but it may be another way to separate nano from some of the extracts that we're dealing with. So I have yet to try this. Um, uh, but again, I'm always looking at ways to separate the nano from the food. And that's where we're at today learning to separate these things from the body. 
or separate them from the food source before they get into the body so it's one less thing your system has to deal with. So when we're looking at, you know, today, you have to think in terms of today. What are we exposed to today? Snow isn't snow anymore. Snow is a biological or nanopathology or nanoparticles mixed with biology coming down from the heavens. And then if it doesn't melt and if they don't wash it off, it evaporates slowly into the air and then everything you're breathing can cause a, an attachment to your respiratory system. And if you're compromised there genetically in the respiratory system, you go out. Basically, you're out, you're out of commission for a week or two. And every time you go into a doctor's office or a clinic, they're checking you out. To, and what they're checking for is the effect of the experiment that they're conducting. So when we're looking at, again, why are you getting sick? What's hitting your body? What, what has caused you to be compromised? First thing you got to look at is the diet. Are you eating the bread? Are you eating the grains? Are you eating the processed sugar, which also will have nanotechnology implemented into it? Are you eating some of the, um, the rice? Are you drinking beer? You know, over the holidays, you decide to take a break from your diet and your restrictions and decide to binge a little bit. And all of a sudden, you feel like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I feel, like so, I feel so bad. I feel so terrible. I shouldn't have ate that cake. I shouldn't have had that piece of bread. Oh, man, I'm just feeling like crap. That's what happens. That's what happens. You know, I don't eat any bread. And one person says, well, did you celebrate? I says, yes, I went to sleep for Christmas. I slept all day. On a few days of the year, I could sleep. Um, when we're looking at what's going on today, that's how you have to consider your measures and countermeasures. You don't need to eat bread. But this is the big thing that they pursue all the time. They show you pizza commercials and bread commercials and pastry commercials because this is where the poisons are more predominant. Food has become a weapon in this last decade. The exportation of grains to the planet and the nanotechnology embedded in those grains are causing complete mayhem in the countries that are buying the grains from the United States or Canada. I mentioned before how the Saudis have bought 49% um, of the Canadian wheat. Now I'm getting calls from the, from the Middle East saying they can no longer function sexually anymore. They're having problems. And we're not talking 30, 40, 50, 60 year old people. We are talking 20s. You know, married already and cannot do anything because they become completely dysfunctional because of the genetics in the food supply. So when we're looking at, you know, what's going on on a global level, that's what's going Look what's going on in India. Growing cotton. You know, growing cotton that's genetically engineered. And then they go to touch it to harvest it and they're starting to die. You know, what is going on? What is happening there? When we're looking at these things today, when you're looking at food today, you have to look in terms of neutralizing what you're eating. Some way, somehow, create a neutralizing effect. Start buying certain foods from the farmer. On pasteurized milk, your cheeses, your eggs. They are going to still have some of the contamination, but again, it would be far less uh, uh, manipulated than if you buy it at a grocery store. You know, when you're looking at stuff at the grocery store, I always tell people nowadays, do not use the broad leaf green vegetables. And I keep telling everybody, take your scope with you. To go get yourself a 60, just a 60x scope, and you will see that the particulate matter 
is embedded into the leaf. You cannot wash it off. Unless you juice it, strain it, and then filter it with an oil filter of some kind, you will be consuming concentrated doses of nanoparticles. You know, um, it's important, again, you understand, in order to avoid a lot of the things that we're dealing with today, start growing your own form of garden. Indoor, outdoor. If you do, if you do the indoor, the heck? if you do it indoors, you got to make sure that again, um, the um, the lights, the and what you can grow. You can grow potatoes indoors. You can probably grow some of the carrots, uh, but play with what you can do. You might need to get grow lights going. Again, play with the stuff. You're going to have to be innovative. The less you buy from the grocery store, the better. The less you are, are wrapping yourself up on a specific food supply to eat all the time, again, the better. Or if you find a simplistic way of doing things, uh, again, where you're eating a very basic diet and that's all you really need, the better. You know, it's easier to neutralize, easier to maintain, easier to filter. And again, it's important that you realize this is the times we're living in. Vaccines are out of the question. Okay, vaccines are again about integrating you a lot quicker into an AI system. And nobody's going to save the day. Nobody's going to swoop, swoop down and save the day with a red S and blue underwear and leap tall buildings. What's going to save you today is if, if there is a lobbying type of activity from the general population saying no to the vaccines. No to the genetics. No to the chemtrails. No, I mean, saying no, sticking with it, campaigning against it. Any politician, any leader, any corporation that wants to implement these technologies that we don't want, they can leave. Force them out of the country. Go somewhere else. Or remove the political infrastructure that's there that's allowing this to happen. In other words, if you've got a mayor, a governor, a congressman, uh, uh, an MP, and they're p uh, uh, voting to promote something that the general population doesn't want, have them removed. The only way this is ever going to really change. You know, have solutions, have things on hand, have countermeasures. Tell me, what would you recommend to those as a replacement for bread? Why do you need to replace bread? Seriously, I mean, this this is the very thing I just got done saying. You've been so brainwashed, so conditioned to eat bread. Why do you have to replace it? Why not learn to eat other things? I tell people to start using potato more. You know, start using other things. You know, the whole macaroni and cheese mentality is what everybody's on these days. It's simple. You got a little cheese, a little bread, put it together, boil it up, and there you go. there's a meal. That's not a meal. Bread is not a food anymore. It's a weapon. So when you're saying to me, what do I want to replace it with? What do I want to replace it with a 44 Magnum, a, 30, a snub nose 38? Because this is what you're talking. You know, you start to learn how to eat again. Look, you've got eggs. You don't need bread for eggs. You got potato. You don't need bread for potato. You got meat. You got poultry. You know, you got dairy products, fermented dairy products. You got root vegetables. You don't need bread. I'm Mediterranean. I grew up, with, I came out of my mother's womb with a slice of bread in my hand. I don't touch the stuff. I haven't touched the stuff probably close to 10 years. Close to it. You know, I do not even miss it today. My diet has become a lot, lot simpler. And I'm, and I'm glad it has because I really don't want to spend all my time eating. I eat maybe two main meals a day and that's it. And I'm gone 19 hours a day. I, and I function well on this. Now some of you are working for hard physical jobs. 
So for you, your protein and your fat content need to be a lot higher. You do need some kind of carb, but that carb should be coming from a root vegetable or fruit that you can peel and consume, like pineapple, papaya, citrus fruits, apples, pears, uh, kiwis, no berries. If you need more sugar, use a little maple syrup or unpasteurized honey. You know, start to think differently. I don't want to replace a weapon with another one. You don't need grains. Look, grains were always at the bottom of the food chain. Now it's at the top of the food chain. Why is it at the top of the food chain? Because it's the number one food of choice to weaponize. As I've stated before, countries that have bought the Canadian wheat have suffered dramatically as a result of their, their capacity to reproduce. All right, let me quickly go through this real fast. Support the Micro Effect Broadcasting Network. You know, uh, they, are, they are an activist group. Give them your support. Support them any way you can. Linda, Natural Earth Organics, 519-980-5995. Uh, and Robin at Snowberry Farms are two sources in Ontario that you can go and get foods from the farm. Check them out. Uh, Robin's on my site. And Linda's got the phone number. ByeBlueSkies.com and Gag Canada. Okay, both are activist groups in Canada trying to make a change for the better for the planet. Go check out Bye Bye Blue Skies and GagCanada.com. Look at Bernadette Green. Check them out. Support them any way you can. Get involved. Get involved. Get involved. Okay, that's all I can say. You got www.health-access.com. Again, another health, health uh, site over in Europe. Check out John. See what he's got. You got me here at 519-977-5351 or independence at yahoo.com. Augmentinforce.com has a catalog link. Click on it. There's there's a flash drive there. There's a bucket. There's the shirts, t-shirts. You've got herbal remedies, solutions. We do consultations. We do have a store here in Windsor. Feel free to check us out. And again, if you need any help with your help, give me a call or an email. Again, 519-977-5351 or uh, independence at yahoo.com. Wow, got all that done in two minutes. Hey, I'm getting good at this. <laughs> it's only taken a dozen years or so, but I'm getting good. <laughs> all righty. So when we're thinking, today's thinking is let's not think about replacing something. Let's think about how we can eat to sustain our bodies and our, and our energy levels and our immune system. Start thinking in terms of what you're eating toward genetics. You know, <laughs> someone's talking to me about warp speed and time. All right, we're done. All right, listen, you guys all have a happy new year. You know, try to come up with better solutions next year. Stay connected, stay networked, support the network here on Micro Effect. Till then, happy new year and take care, eh? See you.